Hi my dear friends, this is Michelle. In this video I want to show you how to do a homemade mold with plastic spoons and silicone. Let's go to see this. First of all you will find all the material in the description box and this is our main actor for this video. Spoons, yes plastic spoons. I'm going to cut where the support line ends and I will match them and I will use first clear tape to hold it still and this is just for avoid these two parts moves just make sure this is in the right place and I will add hot a glue or hot silicone to avoid these moves when we do the mold this will help me to leave it so strong I will use this stick to paste the two parts of the spoon and I will use uh, this clay as a support for the mold and I will use hand soap with water see that I did two different shapes and size now I will just mix the water with the hand soap and I will pour the 100% silicone and I will shape it with my hands and this will avoid the silicone sticking to my fingers this is pretty easy, you don't have to really mix like a lot the silicone. It's important that you don't over mix the silicone because we don't want bubbles or air bubbles in our mold because of course you know these air bubbles will imprint into our pieces and in the resin. So let's be careful with this part. I will just shape the base of the mold to have something like a flat base where the mold can stand very still. And I will use this to put my mold and I will do that carefully because if the mold fell you will have to shape it again and I will do the same. Uh, I want you to note that it doesn't have to look exactly perfect outside because what cares is what is inside. It is just me or we all love the demolding thing. The number you have dialed has been changed. My suggestion is that you have to wait one or two days to leave the silicone completely dry or cure. This is a tip, I use this lid to do a small container for mixing resin or something like that. This is useful, I think. <laughs> now I will mix my resin, but I will mix very slowly, so as not to make many bubbles, because the mold is deep and it is difficult to kill those bubbles in these types on this kind of molds. And as an ocean lover, I will have to do something with shells and all that thing. But of course, you can do what you want. I will use sand, real sand, with a little bit of clear resin. And I will pour this on my homemade mold. And this is a plus, these are clear. You can use this kind of molds for UV resin. And also it's easy to see what you're doing and have a better control of your pendant or whatever you want to do. This video I also want to show you two different techniques to have some effects in your pendant. The first one mixing directly on the mold the colors and the second one mix out of the mold. For this pendant I will use red, black and white and I will pour right into the mold a different color 
and then mix that hoping something cool came out <laughs> I love this technique because the colors tend to fail and it's different with the other technique it, the results are different I will use green or teal to do another pendant and I will mix really well the color and in my cup I will put white and I will mix not completely only a little bit and pour that on my mold now I'm going back to my ocean pendant and I will pour a little bit of green and hoping the sand came up and I leave this like two or three hours till the resin was uh, a little bit hard and I will add the shells I have to say thank you for your comments again and for your love and all the positive things you always said to me thank you thank you thank you and thank you be careful with the bubbles and that's it let's go to the the molding thing this is why I emphasize that you have to leave the silicone cure because I wait a little bit more for this uh, mold than for the second one and the second one didn't cure pretty well outside because the silicone tend to leave some water or soap when it's drying so you need to wait and your pieces will came out pretty well I will sand with two different sandpapers and if I want these pieces in matte color I must sand with at least three different sandpaper but as I am going to varnish it's not necessary you see that sanding marks is because I, I am going to put some resin and that doesn't matter We'll use this painter tape to cover this part of the pendant to avoid the drips Just make sure the painter's tape is inside the outline If you saw my nails extremely dirty all along this video is because I worked with that blue clay that left them very very dirty I'm so sorry <laughs> And I actually don't know how to call this as a dooming or as a varnish thing, but I will go for varnish. <laughs> so I will use a little, only a little of resin. And when you finish, just come back to move the resin again, like two or three times more. and you see there's no drips I will use these eye pins and these are for jewelry and I would just do a hold and I will just roll the thing up or screw the thing <laughs> screw? it's not okay I don't know, I'm sorry it screws like a bad word for me but the translator says this is screw is this what I'm doing right now <laughs> and this is because I'm lazy and I will put UV resin in the top of these uh, pendants and the green one I sanded again because I like more that way and I just cured this like one or two minutes and that's it then I really really want to know what do you think am I wasting my time I make you waste your time do you have one that you like the most or uh, I particularly love this red one uh, because it looks like a shark teeth <laughs> something like that and if you like this video I will ask you to subscribe or share or comment and I want to say thank you 
this one uh, was my favorite I think and that stone was made with the same process and with the aluminum foil and that's it thank you for watching <laughs>